Hi here, I'm Ali Yu from Songway Blues from Mali. Welcome to the Blues Kitchen. With the Blues Kitchen, you never gonna get hunger of music. <laughs> Songhoi Blues are a desert blues band from Mali. Since forming back in 2013, the band have recorded two exceptional records, Music in Exile and Resistance. We discuss the influence of Africa Express, touring the world and working with Iggy Pop. And while you're watching, subscribe to the channel for regular episodes of The Blues Kitchen Presents. Alio, from Songho Blues, how are you doing? Yeah, good, you? I'm very well, thank you absolutely blistering heat at Cambridge Folk Festival today. <laughs> yeah, for me, I mean, it's not hot. I get used to more heat than this, yeah. Well, you can see by my appearance, I'm not getting on quite so well. I've got to say, we've been super excited about meeting you guys because we've been playing your record since we first heard Subo about, I think it was 2013, we heard that record. And we've listened to everything since. We've bought all your records, we've been playing on the radio show. Wow. Absolutely love what you do. Congratulations, you. really, Thank on two you. incredible Thank records. You. But did you play a tiny little show last night in Birmingham? Is that right? Yeah, yeah, we did. How was that? The secret show, yeah. It was good. It was yeah. actually very fun. Wasn't it for like 20 secret guests 40, or something like that? 40, 40 secret guests. It is actually the first secret gig. With, with it because well, you're a big band now. You can do these secret <laughs> gigs, right? We're not big yet. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. We just have to do it because we couldn't stay off for five days. Yeah. We need something to warm up before this awesome Cambridge Folk Festival. Yeah, yeah. So that's where the ideas come from. So I wanted to ask you, um, I don't mean to be insensitive at all, but the way in which your band got together was under really challenging circumstances. But would it be difficult to say, or fair to say that if it wasn't for the hardship of growing up in Mali, that actually Songhoi Blues might not exist? Yeah, sure. Again, everything happened for a reason, you know, and two th before 2012, when the, ba ba the band was born in, uh, created in 2012, before that, we all ha used to have our own band and nothing serious didn't happen since to till 2012 where we met when the tribal war start, when the political situation get, get rough or, or worse and worse, and the jihadist guys come over for the north of the town, the country, which is Kidal, Gao, where I'm from, and Timbuktu, where the guitar player is from. And when that happened, no one couldn't play any music. They banned the music, they banned sport, they banned uh, clubs, no alcohol, no cigarette, nothing, nothing, absolutely. So they kind of take the sound of this town away. So everyone at that moment from the north has to move to the south just to be yep. safe. So how just, far south did you move? 1,222 kilometers. So a long way away from yeah, home? Yeah, it is a long way with the quality of the road. Yeah, you can spend two days on the, uh, on the road. So when everyone gets to the south, one day, just hanging around, in a, there was a, a famous pub in Bamako. Called, a pub? Yeah, called Domino. You know, really? like the game, game Domino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that's where all the young guys from the north used to meet after this event. Oh, uh, okay. So it's kind of a place to satisfy the nostalgia of your own place. And would you be able to hear music there and just like any yeah, other pub? Yeah, that yeah exactly. Music, live music and you know because the music w wasn't banned in, in the south. So it, it, it was the one of the only place you can hear a songway music, a desert blues, where we're from. Yep. And that where you can meet actually people from your hometown. It's like you are English and you go in the middle of nowhere in Timbuktu, you meet one English guy there, it's gonna be, oh wow. <laughs> Even yeah. if you used to hate each other, you will love each other because you are very far away from home. Completely understand. So that's yeah. how we get to meet each other in pubs, start jam together, and that's it. Yeah. And we decide to create something like around that situation, something positive, and that's how the band was born. And once you got together, wasn't the first gig that you did, was it a friend's wedding or cousin's wedding? Yes. We met actually on Friday, and Sunday, 
one of my cousin called me. She, Hang on, so you started playing on the Friday, met on the Friday? Met on the Friday. As the band? Spent, yeah. <laughs> met, on the fr met on Friday as a mercenary, you know. Yeah. Hanging out, <laughs> chat, talk, jump together in that pub. Yeah. Meet again Saturday. And Saturday night, my cousin called me. She, she's also from the north. And she has to get married. And she's getting married, I mean. And she need a band to play for her uh, the wedding. And they didn't have a band. I was like, okay, so I will find out what I can do for you before tomorrow. And I just called these guys as a mercenary band. Just with, we did a playlist, like cover playlist. Yeah. All the famous hits. What were you playing? All the famous hits people know from the north, you know, like Alifa Kature, like Tina Irwin, mm -hmm. all of that kind of music. And that's some music stuff. people don't get to discover in Western world. Yeah. And that said, the wedding went well, very well. People <laughs> appreciate it. And after the wedding, we get a lot of a lot of money. Everyone was happy and was like, mm, <laughs> that's some good. It's fun. What about now the situation is not better in the country? What about set this band like as a proper band, not a mercenary band, as a yeah. proper band? Four of us just keep playing together. And that's when we start to write our own song. So um, the Africa Express project. Uh, Damon Albarn's kind of, uh, would you say it's like a rolling review of music, isn't it? That's come through Africa. <laughs> How important was meeting Damon Albarn and Nick Zinner from the AES in kind of getting you guys off the ground? Meet Africa Express for us was the really beginning, the starting block yep. of the whole Song with Blues career. Because yeah. before that, it was just to have, for, have fun. But like really start a professional career that happened with Africa Express. Yeah. And uh, big up to them and our band for this uh, initiative to bring all of that huge producers and artists in Mali, like Brianna, you know, uh -huh. uh, Nick Zainer, uh, all of his, some members from B uh, Gorillaz. Mm -hmm. like, it was a lot of people that, that organized that huge casting music. We was like, what, more than 40 bands. Oh, there, really? Yeah. Wow, I didn't realize. In a, in a, in a, 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 a venue called Maison de Jeune. Mm -hmm. That's the name of the album Damon did yeah. with the, all the artists uh -huh. together. It, the album is called Maison de Jeune mm -hmm. because that, the place I people made to, to did the, uh, they did the casting. And when we played that casting, Nick Zainer, who produced the first album, was right in front of the stage. And after the performance, he was like, yeah. Um, you guys. I, yeah, I need to do something with these guys. And Sunday, we did the casting Saturday, and Sunday, they just called us straight. We went into the studio and we, we did the first single, Subo, on one take, like live, everyone together. One take? Yeah, one take, everyone together. Nick Zainer was the second guitar, Garba, his guitar, Umar bass. And the bass player of uh, Damon, mm -hmm. he also playing Gorillaz, say, Oh yeah? Yeah, he also was there with a little acoustic guitar. Really? And we just, it was kind of like a jam session. And we just did it. And Nick was like, that's it. That's all we need. Yeah. And one week later, they sent back us the track. It was like, wow, that's not the one we recorded. <laughs> because hmm. when they bring this, uh, the track in London, that's when Damon here. I see. Yeah, and he put some like special magic keyboard synthesizer and stuff it's beautiful that track yeah. i mean the moment i heard that i was like this is going to be a band yeah. that i'm going to be into i knew the, the first few bars of that song i was like this band are incredible and after that i got a phone call from somewhere i don't know i never heard i never see this number before i was like hello and he's like ali this is ali yeah i'm ali yeah uh, do you guys have a passport i was like oh i never have passport in my life <laughs> Okay, so you need to have passport because you guys are gonna come over to London for Africa Express. I was like, what? I'm dreaming. So that yeah. first time you came over to London, yeah, you played at Oval Space. Oval Space in Shoreditch was 8th of December 2013. That's etched in your memory, isn't oh, it? Oh yeah, oh yeah. So um, just before we finish up, I'd really like to ask you about um, Resistance because when you made that record, you actually came over to London to do it. Yeah. Was that a conscious decision? Was it like, okay, well, let's take this away from home and go somewhere else? Or was it the excitement of recording somewhere else? What, what influenced that decision? Yeah, we had to surf on the wives because at that moment, we did a Songline Award in, in, 
in Barbican, and and we had to start record the album two weeks after. Okay. And the producer who worked on the album, Neil Campbell, is based in London. So it's going to be hard work and expensive as well to take him over to Mali and back, fly hotels and stuff. And some musicians and all the potential uh, uh, guitars and pedals and stuff we got, we, have, we can have in London. Yeah. And we was just like, okay, so now we, uh, we are already in London, Neil is here. What about just find a studio and do the job here instead of bring him over, which is not sure, Mali is not very secure and stuff like, okay, so let's just do it instead of going Mali and bring him over. So let's just save some money. That's how. And then for that record, obviously, Iggy Pop came and got involved. Ah, yeah, ah, yeah. Seeing about the Sahara on that. Special guest, yeah. How, how did that come about? We got a good friends uh, who work with Iggy. Uh -huh. He's actually in Iggy's band. He just been playing the Songway, mu Songway Blues music from the first album to Iggy and stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna work with these guys, these guys. And Iggy enjoyed the music and he loved it. He asked about Songway Blues and our friend tell him that we're just recording a new album. And that's his it. And that's how the connections come from the labels and we Amazing. just record the Sahara and we send him over the, 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 the file and he did his voice on top of it. But we never met. I really haven't yeah, met him? Yeah, no. <laughs> oh, how funny. Well, I hope you get that opportunity. Yeah, of course. Thing. So I'm looking forward to your show this afternoon. Can't wait to come and see you. I mean, thank you so much for taking the you're time welcome. to come and Thanks hang out with us. Here. I mean, we love your tunes. Keep Cheers. doing thank what you're you. doing. Thank when you can so we much. expect to hear your next record? Early next year. Yeah? Early next year, inshallah. Heard it here first, right? Cool. Thank you so much, Cheers. man. Thank you very much. Thank you. Subscribe to The Blues Kitchen for live performances and interviews with the hottest blues, soul, country and roots musicians in the world today.